Hi guys, Frost Fangs here, back with another Paladins video, and he's playing some Fernando today with his hidden secret talent. I feel like that's appropriate when we're playing with Formidable, Scorch, and Aegis are by far way more popular. Aegis being the most, and then Scorch being sort of damaged, but still really, really good. Aegis is, of course, the default shield one, but you can also kind of play aggressively with it. These two don't really need much explaining because you've seen them before. They've been around for a while, but Formidable and its history are quite a bit different. I'm not going to go through what it was before because it doesn't really matter where it is now. It's pretty close to where it was. I never remember it being anything crazy, but it now gives you two charges of your charge. Each gets 100 extra damage, but it's going to 500 from 400. Not that much of a difference. And while dashing, you're immune to CC, which is the biggest part for sure. But for some reason, it increases your cooldown of the charge to 13 seconds. And that's both of them because they don't like recharge together like some other abilities like Grok or a few others. This is basically old Grok where they're completely separate to get both charges is 26 seconds. Maybe if they removed the cooldown increase on it, I could see it being sort of played because the CC immunity is really strong. The 100 damage, they'd have to do something with that because that's not even really worth writing there in the description. And two charges is a really cool idea for Fernando. We're going to try and write it today. I'm going to try and show it off, but it is kind of hidden and secret. I've seen it like once in a year or two, probably, but there definitely is potential there. And even though they've changed it a handful of times, it's somehow still ended up in a really weird position. I have made a build for it, but it's pretty much just the fireball build with a bit of extra charge distance instead of speed on the fireball. We have speed after the F, fireball cooldown reduction because it gives us reset on the F to make this hopefully work. The rest of the builds are on screen if you're interested, but I'm pretty sure they're the same as the last time I covered Fernando, so I'm not going to go through them, and I don't think I tweaked them very much at all if I did. Shout out to our Grover, I appreciate it. We've got a Pip, Sati, and Willow, bit of a weird comp, versus Buck, Damba, Amani, Anara, and Vivian on some Magistrates. Don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Kronos, you definitely want to grab for this, and a Nimble, but it means we're kind of delaying some other stuff you want to get on Fernando. Also, I never noticed this before, but under the actual talent, it sort of tells you what it buffs, and for some reason, this says armor. Buck also has bounce house as recovery. I don't know if they just forgot to update these, but yeah, catalyst, window opportunity, rampant blooming, blast flower, uh, ripened cord opportunity, splitting ice, treacherous, and bounce house. I think I just crashed. Yep, I <laughs> literally got hit with like three things at once and my game just left. I feel like that's got to be telling me something. This is the only time I've crashed so far on this update, in or out of videos. And it's me trying to play Formidable Fernando, the talent that, according to Paladin's Guru, and I don't know how accurate this is, has 3% of people going for it. Aegis is around 80%, Scorch is like nearly 20 and uh, Formidable is making up the end of what Scorch isn't, like 17 to 3. 3% is the lowest I think I've seen, but uh, I think that's why there's been a lot more 4v5s. I'll just drop a high, but it seems like the team kind of had it covered. I don't know if anybody else even had an issue. I think it was just me. We're going to dash. Never mind. I got rooted. That was weird. You saw that I started the dash. I meant to be CC immune, but the priority on it worked out weird. I, for some reason, thought it might have worked. Like, EV ice block where I could, like, cleanse CC. Also, I have to rebuy the items because it's, like, bugged. Don't know if it's when you crash or just any time you DC from a game, but I essentially have to, like, rebuy the items and then leave spawn and then try and buy whatever else I want afterwards. Let's just get some damage here. There's a shield. I'm just going to try and wiggle back. We have a ton of F reset, but the fact that I can't F when I'm crippled is kind of horrible going against the scenario. We'll get some Kronos. Do have to give props to the team though. These guys kind of held it down. The Amani is gone, but for some reason I didn't hear the sound effect there. Probably just too much stuff going on. That is an Amani dragon, but I see her here near spawn. I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of her though. I'm going to hold down my left click. This is the best I can do, guys. Uh, she's gone eventually. <laughs> I guess I'm playing flank Nando. That's the Anara going for the same combo again. I'm just going to hide here in the corner. Grove is healing me. I'm going to drop a U rock. We're fine. This Anara is actually kind of a really hard counter to this, and there's not many tanks I can think of that would actually give you trouble. I'm going to go for the ult because these guys are all in here. The Grove ulted too. That's an R ult. For some reason I tried to block it with the shield, even though I have CC immunity on my F. That's the buck jumping in. I'm dead. I got none of my kit. Got rid of the damper. But yeah, this feels really weird. It's supposed to be the setup that I suppose you grab if you want movement. The other one is, of course, shielding and then damage, but it doesn't really give you that much more movement just because of the way the cooldowns and stuff work. It does give you CC immunity, which is nice. Definitely could see why you would like this, like preference wise, especially with the CC immunity, which is really strong. But I think for me and most people, you're going to have to add some extra onto it. Just pulled up the shield again to counter an R ult. I'm just not even playing as if I have CC immunity on the F for some reason, but uh, there goes the, yeah, Vivian. I'm going to try and get rid of the Anara, just about. Dash and also get rid of the Damba. Triple. Like I said, it's definitely playable. It's definitely not a bad talent because you're still Fernando. You're just not buffing the damage or the shielding. You're instead getting movement, which is a weird thing to buff. Uh, with the way that it does now, because it's not just a straight buff either, because you get the cooldown increase. That's really the best suggestion I've got for it, is just to remove the extra three seconds it gives you, because that is, I think, what really stops me from being able to grab it. There's the shield. Are we going to be able to get away here? Maybe I should be running some every set when we have the shield up, like I have in the normal Fernando setups, but with this, I don't think it really makes sense, because we're not really deploying the shield that often. I uh, don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess I can make a variant of it after this. I threw a fireball there through the two of them, still playing as if I have bonus damage. Dash over here, pat with the back. There we go. Grove alting. The team is playing really well. I will say that much, and the speed buff from the F being able to trigger that twice is quite nice. Definitely do have more movement. It's just a weird talent to recommend compared to the other two that are so directly, you know, making you better at what, you know, you're already trying to do. 
uh, Sunamani Dragon. We're going to just dash. For some reason, that didn't work. I think you can hear me hit the F key there. I just, it just didn't do it. just feel like I'd make this a pretty easy win if I was on like a normal Nando setup. The damn has gone. I don't know if his ult even went out properly there. Hello. Yeah, Amani. There's a Q through the Inara. We'll try and dash through with that cripple. Feels really rough. I guess we can push in here on the Vivian. The score here is pretty much perfectly even. I kind of went around for a flank. I shouldn't be firing into the Inara. That's kind of the wrong play. Let's dash through two of them here and then go for the ult. Get rid of the Amani. Yeah, there we go. I'm really fast in that ultimate. We've got the buff from the F. That is, again, just completely bodying me. And Vivian's also there. There is the defeat. I think there would have easily been a win on normal Fernando or if I just didn't DC at the start. But that matchup also felt pretty rough because of the Anara. And that's one thing I really want to point out, which also shows the weakness of this. This one can be countered. The other Fernando setups can't. You can't really counter Aegis other than Wrecker, but that also counters normal Fernando. And you can't really counter Scorch either because it's just extra damage. Whereas with Formidable, because it doesn't work like Eevee, it doesn't actually cleanse CC. If you're being crippled like with Anara or like a Grover Root or something, or you're in a stun, you can't do anything to counter that. You can just counter something that's about to happen to you. But if you're already in something, you can't really do anything about it. And it felt pretty rough there against Anara. Shout out there to that is their buck. Also our Grover earlier. Yeah, a good game there still. Hopefully I explained what I mean. We had highest damage there actually surprisingly other than their Anara. Very rare that I see an Anara actually play her well. And then their buck who went kind of massive. A pretty good game, but yeah, every other setup for Fernando there would have worked better. I do want to point out also, and I'm not sure how accurate this is because again, it's Paladin's Guru and I'm not sure how well that is being supported. I don't think they even have Omen on there at the moment, but Aegis, his win rate is 54%, Scorch is nearly 54%, and Formidable is just about 53 So it's not that much lower. The data obviously isn't super reliable because way more people are playing Aegis who are newer because it's the only one they have unlocked, and way less people are playing Formidable because it's the last one you unlock, and it's also just arguably the weakest. But Fernando still wins more than he loses with this. But anyway, for game two, it looks to be a much better thing for what I'm trying to show off. We've got our Corvus, Sky, Omen, and Octavia versus Atlas, who we do kind of counter. Then Caspian, Sky, Generals, and Victor, double Kronos. In we go. For the talents here, I definitely should have read them off in the last game, so I would have played around them better. The Generals is going to counter us with Power Cosmo. Didn't even think about that, but Debilitate also kind of sucks. Cardio, Measured Cadence, Spreading, Smoke and Dagger, Binary, and Hella High Water. Let's try and play up front. Hello, enemy team. There's a big fireball. There's the shield. Yeah, that really, really sucks. I'm going to need to grab something to counter that because we can counter his grab. But his grab won't go on cooldown, I don't think. Um, Atlas is just going back. Let's dash over here, try and help out with just the Caspian, because trying to play the point there is not going to work. Everybody's gone. Yeah, I don't know what I could have done there on Fernando to help that. Everyone's just out. Generals with the grip. I'm just going to stand here, hold the shield up, dash away a bit. Corvus there with the heal. There's a Q through. That's going to be enough for the F reset, because we hit like three of them. Damaging here on the Caspian does not feel particularly great. There's a dash through, which we actually clipped him with there. Is he gone? Um, no. Somehow still no. There's a dash. Just about. Uh, Victor, blast through him a little bit here, he seems to be panicking, I think we can clear him right, there's a dash, chase Fernando, can we clear him here, nope, because he's got more self heal in cardio than I can deal, just damage, uh, there's a dash, we are kind of distracting them here, is this worth doing, probably not, there's a fireball, the Genos is gone, what are they doing, don't know what's going on with the team in this one, I'm going to try and hold the point, we're going to dash the Genos, there's a fireball on him, big hits, but he's still up, he's not that tanky to be honest, I guess we can go in and try and finish him off, uh, fireball and the thing, is that going to be enough, he hasn't got self heal I don't think, so maybe, uh, shielding here again. I'm going to go in on the Genos and get rid of him here. Yeah, I guess Flank Nando is better with this than if you were going for the Scorch setup. I could ult here. Let's not do that. I kind of jumped into him there. But we held it, sort of. Don't know if what I said there made any sort of sense, but I feel like it did. Let's just avoid the sky. I'm trying to get the other dash off, but there is an internal timer on it, which is super annoying. I do see you, by the way, Atlas. You're not that sneaky. Uh, he's going to rewind us. That's fine. Let's just dash back towards the point. He's going for the thing. Uh, we counted that. There's a fireball. The CC immunity really is the best part of it for me, at least. But even then, it's kind of a hard sale. That's the main point of this video, is that this is a hidden talent. And uh, yeah, maybe it should stay that way. Let's go for the ult in a second, because the round's nearly over. And I just need to buy time here. Uh, I was spamming the button. But anyway, in we go. Round two. I think we've got two or three minutes less than max time. The team's been doing fine in this one. We've just kind of lacked a bit of damage output. Their team hasn't really been screwing me too bad, to be honest, other than just the fact that I can't clear them because they've got a decent amount of healing sometimes. I'm just going to push forward and try and zone them out with a team pushes the objective. Big fireball scorch there would have been huge. What's going to do other than that play just there? I don't know. Caspian's kind of on me a little bit there, but let's just keep zoning them over. Big fireball. Just missing that damage from scorch really hurts. That is the entire team pretty much gone. I'm going to have to try and push them. There's a fire through two i'm dashing but i'm crippled if it did cleanse cc like you know an eevee thing i think this would be way easier to recommend if you could actually get out of cc with it and you've really seen that in these two matches today definitely could see that some of the things i'm recommending or you know suggesting or whatever could make it too strong i'm not going to disagree with you on that i think maybe it cleansing cc would be too good i'm going to go for the ult here and uh, just try and push up here with a team but i'd rather it be too good than not good enough because right now 
Fernando's got two other really good setups. Leave him to do his thing. We'll push in here on the Genos. Flank Fernando with this is better for sure. I notice I can get around a hell of a lot more than with the other setups on him. But I don't know if that's worth a trade-off. We're going to push in here. Get rid of the Caspian. He should be dead to tick right. Yep, okay. Just about, I think it was the last one. 500 is a little bit nicer than 4, but not by that much. We'll dash again. Uh, actually countered the CC there. The CC immunity really is the selling point. At Fireball, there's the shields. There's a dash. I can't do anything. I'm trying to stay in the Sky Heels, but... I'm dead here any second. It's just me and for some reason the Octavius mounted up over there. Stash across, fireball through a bunch of them. This has been a really good showcase for I think why this setup is good and also not good enough at the same time. If that makes sense. Hopefully. There's a fireball. I probably should use at least one charge before I do that. Get the reset. Getting the double dashes on him is kind of funny because it hits for 500. It's actually not terrible, but uh, Victor's gone. There we go. Let's also get rid of the generals here. Stash through him. Nice. I think we could have won it technically if a few of the fights went very slightly different. There's a little fireball for him. Yeah, again, seeing 450, 450 instead of like 450, 600, it's even more than that, right? Because the first it also deals more. Corvus just taking that to the face. And there we go, there is the defeat. The start is quite a bit better than I was expecting it to be, but overall we performed as you would expect from Formidable Fernando. We did have a lot more movement, 90k damage that I'm happy with. That is high as that game. Even though it isn't for me, I can totally see why it would be for other people. And I understand if you love Formidable, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I did tweak the build a little bit, just to be a little bit different and get some reset on the F with the right click, which I felt like I kind of needed. There isn't really space in the build, to be honest, because that you need so many of the other things in there, but yeah, this is sort of what I settled on. And again, I don't think I'd recommend it, but I would recommend you go out and give it a shot and try it at least to see which one you sort of prefer for Fernando. For me, it's Scorch number one, then Aegis, then Formidable. But Formidable with a few tweaks could become my favorite or my second. We'll see. And yeah, that is where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Let me know what you want to see me do next. I'll see you guys all very, very soon. And as always, stay frosty.